Hello, and welcome to another edition of Real Discoveries. This time, we find ourselves in the Big Apple, a city so crowded that it's enough to make people lose us, literally in this case. An evil descendant of the Aztec race has managed to summon up the great feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl, and man, is it hungry. It's up to a pair of detectives and a two-bit crook to solve the mystery of Q. David Carradine plays Detective Shepard and Richard Roundtree Shit! Can you dig it? Pays, plays his partner, De Detective Powell. They are assigned to investigate a series of gruesome killings. A beheaded window washer, a body found in a hotel room with all of its skin removed, a beheaded construction worker, a body with its heart cut out. Reports are received of a giant bird snatching sunbathers and swimmers off of rooftop pools. Reports that Powell writes off as mass hysteria. Shepard, however, is intrigued by the ritualistic style of some of the killings and goes to a museum to talk to the curator to see if there could be some connection. The curator tells him that the skinning and the heart sound like the ancient Aztec rituals to summon the great god Quetzalcoatl, an enormous beast that is half lizard and half bird. He gives Shepard some research materials, and Shepard becomes obsessed with the idea, much to the consternation of his bosses. As all of this is going on, we meet Michael Moriarty as two-bit criminal Jimmy Quinn. He's been down on his luck lately and gets offered a job as a getaway driver for a jewel heist from a couple of big-time mobsters. Telling them he'll think it over, he goes to a bar where his girlfriend Joan, played by Candy Clark, works as a waitress to audition as a piano player. The jazz piece he plays is so terrible that the owner turns on the jukebox to shut him up. Despondent and desperate for money, he calls the mobsters and takes the job. When they pull the heist, they force Jimmy to go into the shop with them. A few moments later, Jimmy runs out carrying a bag full of diamonds. Unable to start the car because the mobsters took the keys, he flees on foot and gets hit by a cab, causing him to lose the jewels. He hobbles his way to his lawyer's office on the top floor of the Chrysler building, only to find it is closed for lunch. As he bangs and pounds on the door, a nearby security guard thinks Quinn is trying to break in and pursues him into a construction area in the dome of the building. It is there that Quinn discovers a giant nest with a giant egg resting in it. He also discovers a number of eaten human carcasses, including one wearing a distinctive charm bracelet. He returns to the apartment he shares with Joan, where the two mobsters track him down and demand that he show them where he hid the jewels. He leads them back to the dome, where Mama Q is home and very hungry, killing the two mobsters but allowing Quinn to escape. It is, of course, a matter of destiny that Quinn gets picked up by the police for the jewel heist and meets Shepard and Powell. Quinn blackmails the police and mayor for one million dollars in total immunity from his crimes in exchange for the location of Q's nest, and the hunt to destroy the creature begins. The movie was written and directed by Larry Cohen, best known for his It's Alive trilogy of films about mutant cannibalistic babies. Well, this is certainly one of his better scripts in terms of the double storyline merging into one and in terms of the depth of character given to Jimmy Quinn. The special effects are decent, although at times when showing the full creature, I felt the stop-action model looked just like a uh, uh, stop-action model. <laughs>
cleverly plays the Jaws card by not giving us a clear look at the whole creature until the final third of the film. The story builds gradually with just enough shocks and twists along the way to keep our interest piqued. As far as the performances go, Carradine is his usual implacable self. Come on, Grasshopper, Kung Fu is over already! Richard Roundtree plays Powell like he's in an all-white blaxploitation. Huh? Hey, what are you looking for? Looking for the head. The only place I haven't looked is up in the parapets. Won't be much left of it. Did you ever drop a cantaloupe from 40 stories? So what the hell do you make out of this? Well, I figure something fell out of one of the windows on the floor up above and hit him. Sheared his head clean off. A big, big char of glass or something like that. There are no broken windows up there. Oh, shit. Maybe his head just got loose and fell off. But what do you want from me? Michael Moriarty's over-the-top performance as Jimmy Quinn, which makes the film worth watching. In my opinion, it is one of his best performances second only to his performance as Williamson in the Hanoi Hilton. He takes the material of Quinn's character and runs with it, creating a performance more memorable than the special effect. Don't shake up there, Quinn. Don't shake up there, Quinn. This Quinn, huh? Bitch. More heights, huh? Yeah, we've got to go up one more. Yeah, it does. Our friends here to move over, Francis. called Evil Dream for the piano audition scene. His performance is just fun to watch and worth the price of admission. It's what puts this movie on my must-see, though not necessarily must-own list. Well, that's it this time. I'll see you next time on Real Discoveries.